Welcome back, everybody, to Guidewell Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock. We're here at the end of day two of Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. And there's no better person to end our day with than the founder and the chief curator of Exponential Medicine, Dr. Daniel Kraft. Daniel, welcome back. Great to be back. Daniel, we're here to have you kind of give us a recap of what we saw on day two. And to help you with that, we actually have one of the graphics that Janelle King created that really helped to uh, demonstrate what the day was. So if you want to walk us through that, sure. let's take a listen. So day two sort of was building on day number one where we looked at different exponentials, AI, robotics, 3D printing, nanotechnology, 3D printing, sort of as, as their trajectory. And then we're looking at how we can apply those in practice. So our first session today was on the sort of the future of genomics and how omics in general are shifting our personal health and those in the clinic. So um, our first session today was called um, Omics Biotech and Beyond, and it was uh, moderated by Moira Gunn, who is the host of Biotech Nation on National Public Radio. And um, we had several amazing faculty, um, including uh, Stephen Burchard from UCSF, uh, my old actual medical school roommate at Stanford, who's looking at the impact of your genes and ethnicity on how different drugs work. Uh, you know, as asthma genes for African Americans work differently than Caucasians, for example. We had Robert Green, who is a professor of genetics at Harvard, looking at the person to person genomes project. How do we start to integrate and make sense of massive sequences of data from individual patients, um, matching that with phenotype data? Um, we had in that session Joel Dudley, a uh, professor at Mount Sinai in New York City, where they're doing some incredible work blending not just precision medicine, but preventative medicine, sort of the, the, the precision of prevention and health. How do we pull together data and be proactive and use it uh, in the clinic and translate that across the biomedical spectrum. So um, that was sort of our uh, OMIC session, though we ended that with Jamie Metzl, who kind of touched upon some of the interesting ethical implications of all these genetics and CRISPR and gene editing and things that are sometimes coming faster than we have regulatory processes for, um, and sometimes uh, uh, laws and, and smart ways to watch the slippery slope. Um, following our genomic session, uh, we moved a little bit into the realm of digital or connected or mobile health. Um, how we're starting to take uh, a whole slew of devices that used to just live on our wrist and are now becoming connected. The Internet of, internet of Things coming to the Internet of the Body, coming to the Internet of, of Healthcare. And that was led off by Dr. Um, Einar Sawyer from UCSF, who works with their program of digital health and innovation, looking at how some of these technologies are getting smaller, cheaper, integrating into the clinic in interesting ways, how new startups are being born uh, in, in Silicon Valley and beyond. Um, and speaking of entrepreneurs and startups, Julia Hu, the founder of Lark, took us through her company, which started off with the first wearable in the Apple stores, and has now sort of pivoted to creating a artificial intelligence uh, mobile assistant on the Lark, uh, which can enable us, uh, maybe today, to sort of have a little AI agent that can help you with your health and diet, but is gonna move into the realm of managing chronic disease. And we closed that session with Robert Bober from Oxner Health, where they're starting to use and integrate things like Apple Health Kit and data that flows into their electronic medical record to manage things like hypertension and congestive heart failure. Following that session, we looked at a little bit of uh, collaboration um, and how we can bring different parties together. Uh, one of our famous, favorite faculty has been back for many years is Lucien Englen from uh, the About Center in the Netherlands. We have a whole slew of folks from the Netherlands here. He talked about some of the partnerships they're creating, patients included. Innovation is not about the physician uh, and biotech and pharma, it's more and more including the empowered, engaged patient who owns their data and can share it in empowering ways. And um, we had some partners from Philips, sharing how Philips is starting to combine and collaborate with folks uh, from Mark Benioff's uh, Salesforce to uh, many others. Um, finally, we ended the morning session with the amazing Dr. Alex Haddad, who comes to us from Toronto, and is really trying to globalize healthcare. That's what is health? Is it just sort of the absence of disease? Who feels healthy, who feels not? He brought in a, a patient uh, and a physician from Israel who using precision and personalized medicine were able to cure what seemed to be an incurable cancer. So blending, you know, scaling uh, innovation, healthcare, and bringing it down to the individual level. Uh, we had an amazing lunch break. We had breakout sessions, 15 different breakout sessions from, from big data to mobile and global health. Uh, and then we switched into the uh, afternoon session. So um, this afternoon, uh, after lunch, uh, we switched back to took a little bit um, about translating exponential data and making it individualized actionable information. Dr. Jack Kreinler, who's uh, from the UK and graduated from our first programs and founded a company called Centrian, 
talked about an interesting story about a woman who had trouble, had cancer, uh, was then uh, infertile. Uh, they had made a lot of struggles to cure cancer, uh, have a baby through the magic of a surrogate and in vitro fertilization, mm. and then uh, revealed that that patient was actually his wife and was joined on stage and really, I think, really moved the moment with his daughter, Sienna, who's 18 months old. Uh, after Jack, we had the CEO of HeartFlow, right. who is really an exponential company taking CT scan based scans of your heart and cardiovascular system and personalizing those to replace an angiogram. So, personalized coronary blood vessel analysis is an amazing example. Um, um, and then, uh, also in that session, uh, we talked uh, from the folks from IBM Watson, uh, folks from Microsoft who are blending HoloLens into both mental education uh, and big data, mapping. Uh, 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 the health of a community uh, using things like Google Maps and, and Excel, really right. interesting. And finally, uh, in the afternoon, we looked at scaling innovation. It's one thing to it's one thing to have technologies. How do you actually get it into the clinic? So we had folks from Kaiser, Dr. John Madison, who is the CMI of Kaiser, uh, talk about some of the challenges of integrating into a large system like Kaiser. We had the head of the VA innovation. We had the head of the Cleveland Clinic, uh, Tom Graham, who had some great examples about innovating the Cleveland Clinic way and how the lessons might translate from there. We had Mina uh, Xiang from the White House, uh, the Precision Medicine Innovation, uh, Precision Medicine um, Initiative, as well as uh, some of their work with expanding access to data uh, and healthcare.gov. So we kind of wrapped where's this all sort of heading as we scale, and how do we take this forward, not just with the technology piece. And finally, now on stage, our closing keynote is my old med school classmate, our undergraduate classmate from Brown University, Dr. Lee Hochberg who's a pioneer in brain-computer interface, enabling someone who's quadriplegic to control robotic limb just with, with their thoughts. So that was a brief recap of day number two here at Expansion Medicine. Oh my gosh, Daniel, and the fact that you were able to recall every single individual, and no doubt it left such an impression, not just with you, but with everybody who got to tune in. I would love for you to tee up for us just the themes. I'm not gonna make you do a, a complete rundown of names. Folks can, can check online and see what that agenda's about. What are some of the themes that you're gonna be presenting to tomorrow's participants? Uh, tomorrow, one of the themes is one of the most exciting areas now, which is neuroscience and neuromedicine, which is sort of ripe for change from psychiatry uh, uh, and mental health uh, to treating those with disabilities. So we'll have a session on neuroscience um, from optogenetics to brain-computer interface to using mobile for um, tracking mental health to wearable brain-computer interface headsets and those that apply energy. So we'll kind of explore that realm, including patients themselves who have problems and are trying to solve them. Uh, a veteran, tomorrow's Veterans Day, and one of the right. veterans who will be joining us uh, is working on a company called Spinal Singularity. We'll look at global health with Eric Rasmussen, um, some of the implications of taking some of these technologies and democratizing them, preventing pandemics, um, and managing large-scale sometimes disasters. We'll have folks from MIT looking at hacking or sort of leveraging the, the, the maker culture and new ways of innovating, and the, the nurse uh, hacking culture as well, maker nurse. So that's a bit of the morning. In the afternoon, we'll look at regenerative medicine, we'll look at longevity with Human Longevity Incorporated, um, and um, we'll finish up our day uh, sort of trying to meld all this together and ask uh, how we can all scale innovation um, as we uh, go into our keynotes from Dean Ornish, who looks at sort of old school technology, yoga, meditation, diet, yeah. how we can work to preventative medicine and even reverse disease using old school technologies. And we'll hear from our Singularity University co-founder, uh, Dr. Peter Diamandis, also founder of the XPRIZE, about sort of bold thinking and um, and how there's more of abundance in the world than we might think and new ways of thinking that are applying to grand challenges, not just in healthcare, but across the planet. Well, Daniel, I, I think that for everybody here, the energy that we have felt uh, here at Exponential Medicine, the passion that people bring, it's clear from the folks that you have brought on stage that you really are changing conversations in such a meaningful way, really connecting the right people together. And I look forward to seeing day three and everything that unfolds there. We're halfway through the, the 26 mile marathon, aren't we? That's right. So please join us again here tomorrow at the Guidebelt Insights Lounge as we continue to bring you interviews with the thought leaders and the innovators here at Exponential Medicine. Dr. Kraft, thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna let you go back. Please be sure to join us again tomorrow. We'll be here again soon.